I'm excited about it because, you know, the, all the players have um, really taken to it. Uh, you know, it's in their nature because of the high school systems they come from. So it was an easy uh, transition for them. Uh, we've been able to do a lot more quicker, faster because of their backgrounds. Um, you know, and it's 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 been it's been fun. I, you know, I think I've told you guys back a couple weeks ago. You know, it stretches you as a coach when it's um, you know you can do so much. You know, with uh, you know the players that you have because what they're they've, what they've been exposed to. So it's been pretty. It's been a really good transition for all of us, players and coaches. Are you, are you uh, in your mind, is success like? Getting a getting a snap off in twenty seconds or twenty five seconds. Well, we want to go as fast as we can go, you know, and that would be, you know, you'd like to get a snap, you know, you, you want to be warp speed, you know, in that twenty three, twenty four range, right. you know, you want to really, you know, press the tempo, and be inside of that, you know, somewhere, you know, go as fast as you can, and depending on what speed we're in, what gear we're using, we can go faster, or you know, we want our normal speed to be, you know, that would be a minimum. Coach, I know you're going to say both quarterbacks are going to play you know, mm -hmm. on Saturday, but you went into an open competition mm -hmm. and you guys gave Gerard Hurd a chance to basically become the starter. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Like, what did you not see that made you just go with Tyrone instead of Hurd? Well, it was, it was pretty, you know, what happens when you have competition really at any position, it was certainly the case here. You know, over the course of time, you let the guys earn that position, meaning that they handle, you know, they grade out. Um, you know, they grade, their grades show it. It shows in their play. It shows in their grades, you know, what you get from the film. It shows in their production. It shows in their management. So, you know, he just, you know, he's got an experience level on Gerard. Um, you know, that Gerard is, you know, r really honestly about where Ty was a year ago. You know, he's, uh, but the nice thing about that is that he's got, you know, Ty in front of him and someone to learn from where, you know, really honestly, you know, Ty was learning by himself. And uh, so Gerard is moving along a lot faster, you know, and, and he's he made it really competitive. And I think, you know, the thing that's really gratifying for me is both of those guys are each other's best ally, best friend. And they really help each other out. <clears throat> you know, they're, uh, they push each other. They love competing with one another. When somebody makes a big play, they're, the first guy down there is whoever, you know, whoever was out. You know, if Gerard did it, Tyrone's there. If Tyrone did it, Gerard's there. You know, so those guys have been really supportive of each other and have enjoyed the competition. And I believe if you ask Sherrod, he'd tell you the same thing I'm telling you. He's benefited from, you know, seeing Ty, the steps that he's been able to, you know, transition through and grow through. How much more do you think Gerard needs to kind of grow and learn before you're ready to kind of throw him out there full time? Well, he's, you know, everything here has to be earned, so he'll have to, he'll have to earn that. But he's, uh, you know, he's, he's doing a great job. I'm really pleased with him. I think we have two players that we can certainly win with in both those guys. And, um, you know, he'll, he'll, he's just got such a different skill set that he brings to the table in terms of a runner. Um, and he can still yet throw it, you know. So he's got really big upside. I think his transition is just learning to, you know, learning continually to feel comfortable in the game. I think he's learned it, but learning to feel comfortable and just be instinctive as opposed to processing everything, trust his, you know, trust himself. I think one of the big things players have to do is they have to learn to trust themselves. When they trust themselves and play naturally, it's like pickup basketball. You see the athleticism and the skill set rise. And I really believe he's on the cusp of doing that because he just keeps gaining more and more confidence. How close is Laxley to maybe pushing throughout to the numbers? He's, he's a ways away, uh, you know, only because he's a freshman. You know, it's to be expected where he's at. But his skill set, you know, everybody recognizes what he's got when he's out there on the field. I mean, he can run, he can throw. Um, he catches your eye, and you know he's just uh, you know he's learning. You know he's you know we're sitting there watching film today, and you know he's learning so much about defensive football. You know he's maybe saw two or three coverages in high school, and now he's seeing all these different things going on, and it looks like uh, you know it looks like a you know Star Wars man. There's just stuff going on everywhere, but the game's starting to slow down for him too. You know, and I tell you the thing that you get and that we haven't had. We didn't have a year ago. Is you got you got some good examples in front of him. When you got a guy who's a good example, and he's got two. He's got Ty. He's got Gerard. The learning curve will be a lot faster for him, because he'll be able to see it done correctly. You know, a year ago we were you know trying to help Ty find how to do it correctly. Um, now the case is you know Gerard has been able to learn from Ty, so he's a lot faster along 
and Kai now has got both of them. So I think that's one of the things that really is so critical in a program is to have a competitive room at quarterback where you have depth and you have guys, you know, good examples in front that, you know, can show the example and then good competition skill set like Kai's got, like Gerard has to push the room because that's the only way the starter is going to get better to, you know, a championship level where you can win with that guy at a championship level. I mean, he's got to have that competition. John, uh, Charlie said yesterday, he told the guys <clears> on offense, don't make the quarterback win the game. Mm -hmm. In other words, I understand the sentiment behind that. I mean, everybody do their job. Right. Do you have quarterbacks that are capable of winning a game? I mean, can a quarterback do that? You know, you know, all those things, I believe that they can. You know, I believe Ty can do that. But here's the thing, you know, he knows what I'm going to tell you because I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. All these things have to be proven. You know, he started to show those things on the field. Uh, I think our whole football team has seen him, you know, extend, and they've seen him really grow, and they've seen him make a lot of plays out there for us and during camp. So there's a confidence in him that wasn't there a year ago because he's produced, and uh, now he's got to do it on the stage. You know, that's his next step. You know, I, I mean, this is a real, a real world that we live in. We're not going to sugarcoat things for the kids because practice is one thing, games another. So now we got to prove it on the big stage. How valuable is uh, Jonathan Gray to this offense, especially helping relieve some of the pressure? He's real big. Uh, I think all of our tailbacks are, but Jonathan, especially just because of his, his experience, he's so he's so good in protection. Um, you know, he knows our protections inside and out. He's like a coach out there. Um, when it comes to that, he's uh, you know he's a very durable runner. You know, he's got you know he's he's a physical kid in protection. Um, you know, he's done it. I, I challenged him about two weeks ago, you know, told him if he ever wanted to play beyond here, he's going to have to be a great pass protector. And he's been wiring guys up, taking them on, squaring them up, and wiring them up with his hand, hat, hat and hands. And I've been really pleased with how he's uh, progressed this fall. So he's huge for us. Not, you know, not only in what he brings in production, what he brings in what he knows, but his leadership because of those two things. He's instant credibility. When he talks, everybody listens. How much does it worry that he's going to be back there returning kicks and just? No, it doesn't. You know, it's a game of football, man. You got to go. You know, he he'll be fine. He he's good. You know, we we've got uh, you know we've got a pretty good room in there. That's one of our you know best rooms, uh, the running back room. We've got nice depth there, and you know different skill sets that complement each other. And so he'll be able to return kicks and still do his job at tailback. Sean, is it your hope that when the first mistake or two happens against Notre Dame? Let's try. There's none. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. No, 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Good. That Ty's not looking over his shoulder and wondering if Gerard's yeah. about to take over. Yeah. You know, he he knows what we. You know, he he knows how we operate. You know, how we handle our guys every day around the building. You know, we're very honest with them, and when, when they're wrong, we tell them they're wrong. When they're right, we make sure they're right. We make sure they feel us, because that's really important with a quarterback. You know, uh, especially, you know, they can't play inhibited. You know, they've got to keep that. Uh, you know, keep that uh, competitive edge and, you know, they can't, you know, can't let thoughts like that creep into their mind, you know. But I think it all goes back to how we manage them, you know, as a staff, you know. And I'll tell you, the kid, he's done an unbelievable job. He's really earned the respect of our, our team. And that's the nice thing. I mean, I, I, it's, our, our team feels him and they, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. Do you think there's a misperception about him because he's a quiet guy publicly, but people don't really get to see what kind of student he is with you? No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. You know, they don't. They don't. They they don't at all. He, they don't understand his battle. You know, and that's okay. You know, that's <laughs> that's part of the process, right? That's why he does what he does, and I do what I do. You know, my job is to get him there, and his job is to work to get there. And um, you know, he. Um, they just don't. You know, a lot of people don't see how much he pours into it and what he's trying to do. Because he's coming from a long way now. He's coming from a long way away. And, you know, I, I'm anxious to see what he does. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because, uh, uh, you know, he's he's earned an opportunity to show himself. Kind of along with what we spoke to uh, Coach Strong yesterday, he said yeah. if he saw two freshman offensive linemen on the other side, he'd probably blitz them you know, <laughs> the entire time. Do you have to, you know, kind of go in that mindset that Notre Dame is probably going to attack you that way? Well, if, yeah, you got two freshmen out there. I tell you, these two freshmen are good football players. Or two freshman offensive linemen. I'm excited about them. They're going to be great players in this program for the time that they're here. Um, you know, again, they too weren't given those jobs. You know, they were. They've had to earn them. 
and um, you know they've both done an outstanding job. But you know we we are we're always calculating what other people are thinking. You know uh, you know we we do the same thing. I am. We look for people that we've got to make sure have a quiet night and how we're going to take care of them, and then you know make sure we attack the people that you know we need to attack. So we always scheme ourselves to make sure we we help out the we'll help out those young guys. The tight end position, you lose mm -hmm. Whiteley, but then you. Right. As well. what, what went into that decision? Well, <coughs> we were able. We brought Caleb Blewett over, and uh, he, you know, he had been a tight end, and he gives us an on-the-line tight end body that we needed that you know can set an edge in the run game, and he's very athletic, can catch the ball. So, you know, that was a really good move that allowed us to take DeAndre, who really sees himself more outside uh, as an outside receiver, and play him. You know, probably where his today where his mindset is and where he, he can help us. Is he, is there a learning curve there because he spent a lot of time? At no, not really because the nice thing about it, he's, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's conceptually taught. So he just plugging in, you know, he knows what, you know, he hears a concept, he knows what field one does and boundary one does, and he can plug in. It's very easy. And as a tight end, he's really run a lot of those same routes. So it was an easy plug in for him. He just had to learn a stock block out there. Sean, are you to the point with these receivers that you have, you know, three or four plays that is like almost guaranteed to work yet? With the, that you can dial up at any time. With the, the yeah, we know what, in terms of the skill set yeah. for each kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think uh, you know Marcus has had an outstanding training camp. Um, you know, he's, Jay's really reached him. And we know what you know. We know what we want to do with his skill set. We've been working on it with him. We moved him from outside to inside. And he really gives us some nice thump and nice matchup inside. Uh, DeJay has had a really good camp. Um, you know, we felt him. We felt his explosiveness, his big play making ability. You know, we'll always find ways to use his skill set. And then, um, you know. John, uh, John Burt, and then Armani have both, you know, playing in the outside lanes, and we're using their speed and using, you know, their matchup because um, Armani's so big and strong. You know, he's a, he's a handful for a corner to, to to get a hold of and to press and to bump. He's so strong he can get off people, and John's got length and speed. Um, you know, can do this. You know, can do it a different way. So as we look at that group of kids, you know, we we always are mindful how we target them and then what we do when we do target them, and that's how we you know really build our plans. I know you got asked about the tempo earlier, mm -hmm. but how anxious are you to, to get this offense on the field and improve to everybody out there? The mm -hmm. last time they had of this offense was a bowl game and prove right. that this offense is much better than what you guys Well, before. yeah, we're just totally different, you know, because of a lot of things. You know, we were, we're not battling the same issues we battled a year ago. And it's it, it, it for me, it's, uh, you know, I just I want to get out there and, you know, let our kids take all the hard work we've poured into it and let them, you know, turn them loose and let them play. You know, let him let him have some fun. A couple more guys. John, I know you weren't here for his first year, but do you think mm -hmm. Ty would be in a different place if he had a chance to redshirt? I know that was. Um, you know, I, I, you know, it just it really depends on what the situation is. So not being in that situation, it's hard for me to call that. Um, you know, if he was needed, I'm sure there was a reason why. You know, they played him. Um, you know, I I think he. You know, I think all young players when they come into a program, they need what Kai Loxley's got. You know, Kai Loxley's got some veteran players in front of him to show him, you know, the right way to do things, you know, in terms of management aspect and in terms of execution aspect. And that really shortens the learning curve. And, um, you know, I think, I think Ty would have benefited, you know, from that, like all players do. What is your confidence level right now with Deontay Foreman and Chris Wilson? Oh God, it's sky high. Those guys, I love those two guys. Um, you know, I've always been a fan of the big back. I, you know, I had Chris Brown there at uh, Colorado. I had you know Brandon Jackson there at uh, there at uh, uh, Nebraska, and we had our kids. We had there at Louisville, and we like. I, I love wearing people out with big backs, and these guys, they both carry their pads really well. They're explosive. They 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 make you. They hurt. They make you hurt when you tackle them. They'll wear you out. And they just—they just really great young talents, both of them. And they both had really good camps. I'm really surprised at how well Chris has caught on, and uh, you know how well he's he's doing in some of the aspects that are a little bit harder for a freshman to catch on to, such as protection. 
but he's such a big body. I mean, he's, you know, he's 240, 45 pounds, and he can wire up uh, linebackers and do a pretty good job and protect. So besides being a great runner, and so is, so is Deontay.